Welcome to this Processing Industry Brief. I'm Processing Magazine Editor-in-Chief Jesse Osborne, and I'm joined today by David Brewer of SEPCO. David, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Before we get things started, can you provide the audience with a quick overview of SEPCO? Sure, absolutely. Uh, As you may know, SEPCO is the acronym for Sealing Equipment Products Company, and we are a a global sealing uh, solutions provider uh, for uh, process industry today. Um, We actually, we we have a long history of manufacturing in Alabaster, Alabama, just south of Birmingham. And we manufacture parts or products such as mechanical seals, mechanical packing that goes in pumps, valves, uh, agitators, uh, thermoplastics, we fabricate gaskets, um, air seals that we're gonna talk about today and bearing isolators. And our goal is through engineering and through design, we, um, we take these, pro- these family of products and we apply them to the end user and, and offer them the best solution that can make their equipment uh, run more efficiently and be more reliable. Earlier this year, you co-authored an article that appeared in Processing Magazine that discussed the importance of reliable sealing technology. And a significant portion of that article addressed sealing technology specific to the food processing industry, which we're going to take a closer look at today. To get things started, what are some of the challenges faced by processing facilities that handle dry ingredients or other powders? And why are these types of materials so difficult to contain? Sure. The first part of that question is, you know, in my experience, uh, specific to the food and beverage industry, um, the powders that they use there, such as sugars, spices, um, uh, dextrose, things of that nature. Um, those things are very fine. They're very granular. Um, and in bulk, they actually can create a, either create a dust or as, as a bulk together, they can flow almost like, like a fluid, like a water or what have you. And in my experience, most of the facilities, they categorize um, their problems in two different aspects. One is Uh, would be housekeeping and safety related items. And then the other part would be um, production loss. And so starting with like, you know, safety and housekeeping issues, those things are once that powder and once that dust or or whatever it might be get into the air, um, it can either one be a a breathing hazard. Um, If you're always sucking in, you could imagine sucking in sugars, sucking in spices and, and, and breathing that in all day long, every day, uh, that could cause breathing issues. Um, you know, and, and that reminds me, um, you know, during this whole COVID process, one of my colleagues was down in a facility in Texas that, that actually adds flavor to potato chips. So like barbecue, sour cream and onion, things of that nature. Um, he was in this uh, flavor place where they were, they were adding all this to it. And he had a mask on the entire time. And it kind of goes to the point where what's in the air it, it, you know, and what you were breathing um, is, is very important. And so he actually had a, um, his mask on the entire time. And days after, he could still taste that sour cream and onion mix uh, that he was working on sealing. So uh, since that, since he's put the uh, seal on, he says things that the air quality in the facility have changed dramatically. The other thing is, is once it gets on the floor and once it piles up, um, specifically like sugar, let's take sugar for example, it it crystallizes. And you can imagine uh, it crystallizing and it can become a slip hazard. It can create stalactites and stalagmites that actually can become an impalement problem. You would never think of something like that. But uh, if you've been into some of the candy facilities that I've been in and you see these sugar stalactites and stalagmites, you don't want to get near them. (laughs) Um, But uh, with all that said, um, they become slip hazards uh, and just a housekeeping nightmare in terms of personnel use in general. I mean, they uh, uh, just the time it is to clean that stuff up is is, it could be a nightmare. on the other hand, you know, product loss, uh, specifically in some of the chocolate facilities that I've been into, when you lose chocolate and it, and it actually drains onto the floor, uh, there's a cost associated with that chocolate. And if they have to clean it up and dump it into the trash can or, or into a dumpster or whatever it might be, um, that is, you know, there's a huge cost uh, savings there if you can maintain 
the equipment and make sure that it um, it stays in, uh, in in the process in which it's supposed to stay in. Can you give us an overview of air seal technology and all that it entails? Absolutely. So when we deal with um, traditional type sealing um, solutions, we are looking at what we call is contacting, you know, they're contacting uh, and positive contacting surfaces. So uh, let's, you know, take a mechanical seal for existence or for example, um, a mechanical seal is basically their two faces, they're rubbing together and they are through, you know, in, in layman's terms, they are preventing the material from leaking out into the atmosphere. Same thing is with packing. Packing is a restriction device, mechanical packing that is, it's a restriction device and through a gland load, it's basically constricting around a shaft, thus, um, uh, you know, it creates higher amperage, but it also is a positive sealing source. With air seal technology, what we have done is we have taken a throttle basically, and through air purge, we have brought in a um, external air source. We bring that into the, into the uh, air seal and the throttle throttles the air and creates a positive pillow, a positive air pillow inside the seal that prevents low pressure getting across to high pressure. And, um, and so and what we've done is that is a non-contacting technology. So, um, and what we've seen in the field is through the use of this equipment, through the use of this product, um, we are getting no wear on the equipment. That's the first thing. The second thing is we see the, uh, the amperage uses, the power uses of that equipment goes dramatically down. Um, and, and the, it, which actually in turn makes it last a lot longer. So we've experienced a tremendous amount of success with this product um, and it all revolves around non-contacting technology. And, um, you know, without getting into, uh, you know, the, the physics of it all, uh, it, it's basically, if you think of a hockey table, you know, an air hockey table and you're playing air hockey and that little puck is floating above the, uh, the table as you bang it around, uh, it's, it's similar technology in that, that the, the air pressure is greater than the pressure of that puck being forced down, being forced down onto the table. Um, but also think of yourself, if you've ever used a garden hose and you're out in your, in your garden and you've stuck your thumb over the, um, the garden hose to make the water go further, uh, it's the same, same principle is that the air is coming in and those little holes that are built into our throttle are engineered to the size that they are so that the velocity increases. As the flow goes down, the velocity increases and uh, we're able to keep, you know, through tolerances, keep anything away from, from our seal itself. And it just stays inside the process and never, never enters the atmosphere. I know you mentioned chocolate in, in the article that was published earlier this year. And that's a specific food production type that seems to be kind of a, a trend for you. Do you work with many chocolate producers and what kind of equipment have you seen success with in chocolate or candy processing facilities? Sure. Yeah, we do. We, we have, uh, we have worked with multiple types of, or multiple different uh, chocolate manufacturers. Uh, they're, they're again, it's kind of two types. Uh, one is there's just a bulk chocolate production facilities around the, around the country that actually take the raw cocoa, what it would, uh, if you will, and they, because in raw form, it's extremely bitter. Um, it, it has to be turned into the candy that we consume. And um, so there are companies out there that that's all they do. They, they actually take the, the cocoa, the raw, the raw material, and they turn it into the chocolate that they then sell to the finishing producers, you know, the, the big candy bar producers, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the candy types that you see in the stores and then they sell it to them. But we, we deal with both. We deal with the, the, in, the finishers and we deal with the original producers of the, the manufacturers of the chocolate. The equipment that we actually specifically go after and that we see so many problems with are mixers, uh, agitators, um, and um, feeders and things of that nature. So where the mixers have problems is um, you will see it's a shaft going through a wall with basically a blade on the inside and it is doing exactly what it sounds like, or, you know, it's agitating or mixing the, the raw ingredients and it's mixing it all together. 
Um, with that said, what happens is in between that wall and the atmosphere is a space where the shaft has to go through and that, that shaft tends to move, it deflects, it, uh, it, it, it will flex and roll. And through traditional sealing solutions like mechanical packing or lip seals, that shaft movement has a tendency to displace that packing um, or those lip seals. And through time, uh, it creates a space. And that space allows for the chocolate to pour onto the floor or, or into a sump or whatever it might be. And, um, and then you have product loss or you have uh, you know, just uh, housekeeping nightmares. Um, through the technology that we have developed over, um, over the last several years, um, we are able to keep that chocolate inside the process without it leaking out into the, into the atmosphere. Um, on the other side of the plant, on the other where, where they're doing, where they're making finishing products, um, actually I've personally had experience with uh, what we call rotary feeders and um, they are actually metering like dextrose salt sugars that is going to uh, the other to actually be mixed with that kind of chocolate or peanut butter or whatever it might be that goes in that candy. And again, that becomes a nightmare because believe it or not, if sugar, fine sugar, if it gets airborne, it can create static electricity and through that static electricity can create either a fire or maybe even an explosion. So through the technology that the, the, this, this air seal technology that we're gonna talk about, um, we're able to maintain those silos and those feeders uh, and, and make sure that, that no product gets out in the atmosphere and then that thus nothing's airborne and can create any problems. Uh, moving beyond chocolate and candy processing, what other types of food processing applications have you seen success with as it relates to sealing technologies? Sure. You know, it's funny. You, you never would think about it, but um, there's so many, there's so many things that are common in, in processing in general or, or between food processing, whether it's food processing or steel mills or what have you, the equipment is the same. It's just, it has a different product inside of it. Um, but uh, one of, one of the uh, things that, that, that we have done here recently with um, with dust in, in general uh, uh, it evolved in the in the steel mills in the bag houses of specifically in the bag houses of the steel mills and what was the problem what the problem there was was they had a what they call poppet valves and it's little it's like little vertical shafts uh, that have a gland follower. And um, those, those shaft, what they're doing is they're sealing a fine metal dust. And believe it or not, that dust, even though it's not an end product of what they're producing, that dust is actually then bagged and sold to other, other areas uh, that like zinc smelters or what have you. And so it has a, there's a value to it. But, but not to mention, again, we get into this area where we are talking about breathing, you know, metal dust. You could imagine over time that could, that could cause problems. Well, uh, we developed a, uh, a product that um, is, it's, it's a V set of packing that has a, um, that has copper end rings that those copper end rings had, were able to seal and wipe the, the dust and keep it from, from, entering the atmosphere. But the other thing is the V-set is made of a highly engineered thermoplastic. It's basically a PTFE based uh, carbon material, but um, through the way that the, the lips are energizing, it seals the bore and the shaft at the same time very well. And we have experienced a tremendous amount of success with these, with these V-packs. Uh, and not to mention, we've been able to parlay it into other industries, not just the um, just that industry, it's been we've been able to use it into the pulp and paper, into soot blower sets, and things of that nature, and it's done very well. We we've, we've been we've been extremely happy with that. Now, the applications that you've mentioned have all centered around sealing with an air seal. What other types of powder handling sealing solutions can be used in addition to, or as an alternative to, an air seal in food processing environments? Uh, so with an, with an air seal, we, we've been able to successfully seal things uh, like uh, these agitators and these feeders uh, just using a non-contacting air technology. Um, now, in the, in the other types of, of 
applications that are similar to that that we have not had to have air seals in because you know one thing is air, the air, an air seal can't go everywhere it can only go into areas where you're you're allowed to introduce air into the process so there's a lot of areas where you're not allowed to do that and what we've done there with through either these v sets of packing that i, I just recently talked about um, we've been able to seal dust and and fine particles that way uh, but also just in, in general, in the food and beverage industry, uh, we have an FDA certified packing that uh, it's mechanical packing, it's braided packing, it's pure Teflon, um, and it is, it is braided on an FDA certified machine, and then thus able to be, uh, to go into the food and beverage industry uh, as an FDA packing. Um, because one of the things that we look at is, uh, you could imagine, for instance, dough or um, or any type of spices. If 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 once they get introduced to any kind of humidity or or moisture or anything like that, it can create a a situation where there is a lot of um, microbial you know uh, buildup, and uh, that that stuff has to be cleaned quite regularly. So we, we do have products, we have antimicrobial products that, that, we, can, that we can produce that, that help aid in the cleanup of those, in those type of pieces of equipment. David, thank you for your time today. Before we sign off, where can viewers find out more about SEPCO and its sealing solutions? All right, you can go to www.sepco.com. Thank you for watching this Processing Industry Brief.